Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to At the Heart of Health, brought to you by the American Heart Association. This episode is the first of a two-part series that centers around flu and heart health. I'm Patsy Stallworth, a co-founder of Desert Spoon Food Hub. My daughters and I founded Desert Spoon in 2015 to help promote a healthy and sustainable food system in the Paso del Norte region. On today's episode, we welcome Dr. Alozi, Medical Director at Sunset ID Care. Dr. Alozi is a board certified infectious disease specialist serving patients here in El Paso. Welcome, Dr. Alozi. Thank and thank you for started. being part of this important series of conversations. Our topic today is the flu vaccine and COVID-19 which I'm sure we're all aware of what COVID-19 <laughs> COVID is and oh, the flu. Uh, I'm gonna get right into it. We've got some questions. Is it possible to have the flu and COVID at the same time? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me. I really do appreciate the time you're taking to have this important conversation. To jump into the question, absolutely, it is possible. You know, it's interesting when I kind of look back and COVID has been one of those things that has evolved over time. But when I look back to probably August, September, as we were coming out of that first wave that we had specifically in El Paso and the worries we had about influenza, we really pushed people to get flu shots. I think our flu shot numbers for 2020 bear out that that worked. And part of it was fear, part of it was education. What we then saw, however, was that flu actually came down dramatically, more than 90% in our community. So it's definitely possible to have both COVID-19 and influenza. But part of the thing is that some of the social distancing, the masking, the other behavioral changes that we made have actually reduced flu to, I mean, unheard of levels in this 2020, 2021 year. Wonderful. That's interesting. Now, not only are we protecting ourselves from COVID, but also exactly. the flu. Um, exactly. With that in mind, the flu itself affects everyone differently. What is the greatest risk? You know, when I think about the flu, oh, of getting it, yeah. So when I think about the flu and the greatest risk, I think the people that we want to protect the most are the same people that we're trying to protect from COVID, right? So the persons that have multiple comorbidities, people that have chronic lung disease, people that have diabetes, people that have cardiovascular or heart issues, right? I think that's all important. That vulnerable population or the frail are the groups that in a typical flu year, we have somewhere between 40 and 80,000 deaths and we want to protect them. It's very similar to that group that we're trying to protect from COVID, right? Very similar group. And so I think as a respiratory virus, anything that we can do and we have done, thankfully, in our communities, not just here, but across the state to reduce flu, those same behaviors can also reduce COVID. And so that's a blessing. Great, great. Um, why are vaccination rates in the Black community lower than any other group? Um, mm. Many in the Black community are hesitant to get vaccinated. What would you tell them to convince them otherwise? And yes, you know, my husband has already gotten the vaccination. Thank God. Good. That's a great <laughs> thing. You know, it, it, it's a hard question and it's not going to be solved today. I think vaccine hesitancy and healthcare hesitancy in the Black or African American community is not something that started suddenly today. We've been having right. these conversations for generations. People point to Tuskegee. Tuskegee right. is a sort of North Star around some of the things that have happened to the Black community at the hands of healthcare. But it's not just that, the things are more subtle. They're returning phone calls. They're feeling not talked to. They're feeling not heard, right, that you have. And it, unfortunately, when you sort of look at who are the physicians, not just in this community, but across the board, we don't have enough African-American and Black physicians. And so people usually intend to engage with like 
more than not like. And that's just across the board. It's not a racist issue per se. And so patients at the same time, they also want to see faces that look like theirs. In the absence of that, I really just believe it's education. We have to continue to educate. And you know, when you educate, you have to draw lines in the sand. I, I, I often tell people, it's not acceptable for you to educate and then allow myths and misinformation to fill the space and say, well, maybe that's possible. No, we know the science. You know. We know the data, draw a line in the sand. This is real, this is unreal. And if we have to have a conversation about the unreal, let's talk about that with data. However, at the same time, we have to understand that people are scared and they're hesitant and we have to give them the time to come around. In saying all of that, whether it's influenza or whether it's COVID, the fact that we understand and know that our underserved minority populations are affected by COVID, two to 10 times more than other populations, those communities of color are not going to escape the economic and educational ravages of COVID until they get vaccinated. And so vaccines are our hope out of this. They're our hope into, uh, they're our hope into the future. Well, as, as we were on the line yesterday to get the vaccine for my husband, I told him, you know what? I'm putting you on Facebook. I'm gonna show Good. all the Absolutely. black community that Absolutely. you did it. So hopefully Absolutely. it'll reach some of them. Um, next question. If I have recovered from COVID, can I get a flu shot? Absolutely. So not only can you get a flu shot, but you can also get the COVID-19 vaccine. I think the concern that had been in the past is whether you would get sick, right, in the process of um, being sick from an acute illness like influenza or COVID. But once you've recovered, please absolutely go and get your shot. Okay. And can I, like, let's say I got COVID vaccine or flu vaccine on Monday. Can I get the COVID vaccine on Friday? Yeah, you definitely can. I mean, the only thing I would tell people is try to space it out just because of the side effects, right? We know that about three quarters of the people that get the shot have some localized body pain in the area where they got the shot. We know that about a third have maybe fever, some have nausea, some just don't feel good. And so it usually is worse after the second shot and goes away in two to three days. But stacking shots on top of themselves, if you don't need to, I would just say delay it by at least a week. Okay, this is for my personal use. I'm having <laughs> my cataracts removed Monday on one eye. Okay, okay. And I'm scheduled for my second dose on Friday. Go get do it. Do I do it? Go, Go get, get it. it. Get it okay, done, absolutely, great. absolutely. I think the other thing to remember is that, and you know this, because the availability of the vaccine has not been necessarily easy, because it's a small window of opportunity for access, take it when you have it, right? Seize that opportunity. The vaccine does not make you sick. It won't give you COVID and it won't interfere with any of your surgical procedures. So when your time comes, get the vaccine. All right, great. Uh, and where can El Pasoans get the flu shots? So they can get it from the county. The county has places. The city has places. There's a host of primary care um, organizations across the community, whether it's um, Central San Vicente, La Fe, federally qualified healthcare systems. If you're in a hospital for any reason, you can get the flu shot there as well. But the best thing is to call your primary care physician if you have a relationship with one or call the city Immunize El Paso. And they can give you the best places to get that done. Great. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Alozzi? No, I'm just happy and sort of proud with the fact that our numbers in our community have come down. Right. We had a tragic sort of summer and fall, right? And we lost a lot of lives. And I consistently say that the best way to honor those lost lives is by protecting other lives. And the best way to protect those lives is if you can't get your vaccine immediately, continue to try to wear a mask, physically distance when you can, and watch your symptoms. Outside is great. I mean, we're blessed to be in El Paso and have this amazing weather. Outside is the place to be. But again, when your time comes, get your shot. Great, great. Um, well, uh, we want to thank our viewers for tuning in today. And if you have any questions you'd like us to address, please upload them onto Facebook page our Facebook page. And again, I'm Patsy Stallworth, and I hope to see you on our next episode of At the Heart of Health.
Thank you. Thank you.